Dr. Jacob Rowe is an associate editor for Blood. I'm involved in the care of patients with hematologic malignancies, hematologic cancers, blood cancers, and primarily my greatest interest is in leukemia. And if I get become more specific, it's acute leukemia. And acute leukemia, we have AML, acute myeloid leukemia, or ALL. Now, what happens in AML typically is the inability to produce a sufficient quantity of normal blood cells, white cells, red cells, and platelets. So very often a patient presents with infections, gets treated by a doctor, doesn't respond, after a week or so has a blood count, and then accounts are very low, and one may or may not see leukemia cells. Things happen very quickly after that. We get a diagnosis, you confirm it with the bone marrow, we do all the genetic studies, we do that, but it is a devastating news to a patient. Fortunately, where we are now, there's a hope in AML for a significant percentage of patients who present. And that is something that wasn't here three decades ago. It gets better every year, including the management of older patients. When you make the decision to treat AML, the initial treatment today, in this period where we are now, is fairly standardized. There's a standard treatment that we give patients, and that's easy, but it's not easy. It's easy to make the decision what you do, but what's different, what's happening nowadays is, usually at diagnosis, we try to define the patient's type of leukemia. There are genetics, there are cytogenetics, there are mutational factors which tell us about the prognosis of a patient, tell us about the likelihood of the patient responding to initial treatment, and once they respond, what's their likelihood of relapsing. The importance here is because you can then adapt and tailor or target, whatever you like, and what therapy we give them depends on the genetic information that we have up front, and, and that may take a week or two to come back, so we have that available uh, when we need to treat them afterwards, with the aim then not just of getting them into remission, which is the first aim of treatment, but actually of offering them a hope of cure. For several decades, we have guided therapy by the genetics of the disease. Nowadays, we are getting much more sophisticated. It's not a single genetic, it's not a single gene, but it's usually the interaction between genes. The hope is, and we're not there yet, the hope is that knowing so much about the genetics and the mutations will actually be able to develop specific agents that are specific for those mutations or for those interaction of mutations. The potential is enormous and we expect that in the next few years this is going to be exciting. So lots of clinical trials are underway and it offers a lot of hope in the future for patients. Mm -hmm.